We're going to bring in Morgan Ortega, State Department spokeswoman. Welcome back here and good afternoon to you there. Several. Thanks, Bill. Several Thanks topic, for having me. You bet. Several topics to rifle through First China. What, what are we as a government trying to do here? Uh, that's an excellent question. I think what we're trying to do is to look at the Chinese Communist Party and Chairman Xi for, for who they really are. I think we are guilty in Washington, both sides of the foreign policy aisle, for many years, for decades, for almost 40 years, in fact, uh, of not seeing uh, the Chinese Communist Party for who they really are. So when we look at social media companies that are based in China, when we look at uh, technology like Huawei or 5G or ZTE, anything that this administration has been talking about. This isn't because uh, we have some sort of animus towards these Chinese companies, but rather uh, we have American national security, of course, in the forefront of our minds. We're also very concerned about the American people's private data. So when you download one of these apps on your phone or whenever you use Huawei or some other or ZTE or some other infrastructure, we are concerned that American citizens' private data gets into the hands of the Chinese Communist Party. You remember that they hacked into our information uh, in the second term of the Obama administration, and we lost many people's security clearance information to the Chinese Communist Party. So we know that they have the ability to do it. Okay. We know they have the okay. capability two, two, to do two it. Two questions. Then. Sure. If I download one of these apps, do they have all the access they want in my phone? So that's something that our security officials are looking at, not just in the United States, but you see in the United Kingdom, they're taking a more aggressive approach. Mike Pompeo has been talking about this around the world for the past two years, warning Western companies that the values that we espouse, uh, especially as it relates to national security and privacy, are not shared uh, by these companies that are controlled by the Chinese Communist Party. So we welcome companies. When, when companies like Facebook and Google and Twitter say, you know what, we're not going to allow the Chinese Communist Party to have access access to our data, that's great. And if other con uh, companies want to follow suit, we would certainly welcome that. Uh, big tech seems to be on board. Is that, is that the suggestion? Because wh wh when well, it comes to Hong Kong, anything that yeah. you have done from the State Department doesn't seem to have changed any of the Chinese behavior there. Yeah, the Chinese have certainly been increasingly more aggressive in the past years. I think the big difference, too, Bill, is, is that the American media is now covering it. Remember that they were incredibly aggressive during the Obama administration, uh, stealing our intellectual property, the provocations in the South China Sea, uh, stealing our private security information, and the list goes on and on. So they have been doing this for quite some time. I think the big difference is that this administration, the Trump administration, is just not ignoring it now. We are shining a light on it. So Yes, they continue okay. to erode the freedom and autonomy of Hong Kong, uh, and we're standing up for them. Two more things quickly, two minutes sure. left here. World Health Organization, what's the effect of pulling the U.S. out uh, and mm -hmm. U.S. dollars significantly as the president plans next July? And by the way, Joe Biden says if he wins in November, he'll get back in the World well, Health Organization. Yeah, I'm sure he did. Uh, if you look at what Secretary Pompeo days did yesterday, we officially notified the Congress that we are with beginning that process of withdrawing. President Trump has laid this out. Listen, there is no one more generous than the American taxpayer. Uh, we have given no close doubt. to $200 billion for the global health uh, infrastructure that currently exists on the planet. We will continue to do it. But what we won't do is fund an organization that screwed up on COVID-19, screwed up on SARS, SARS, screwed up on Ebola, and screwed up on HIV AIDS. We had to create PEPFAR, a U.S. government new entity, because of the massive screw-up that WHO had done on HIV AIDS. So we're still going to be generous. We're still going to fund global public health. We are by far the most generous country on the face of this planet, and we will continue to be, okay. but we're going to be good stewards of American taxpayer uh, th dollars. This, this question came up repeatedly. There was a big fire at the largest nuclear facility in Iran over the mm -hmm. weekend. I know that a lot of questions came. Was the U.S. involved? Was Israel involved? And other questions were not answered. What, what I want to know is, what did this extent of the fire. What, what, what did it do, ultimately, no matter who was the blame here, to the nuclear program in Iran, Morgan? I'm not at the point that I can answer those questions specifically on Nantaz, on the fire that you're talking about, but I would just say that the threat from the Iranian regime remains. Secretary Pompeo announced this morning that we interdicted yet another shipment of weapons uh, from Iran to the Houthis in Yemen. This, again, violates a U.N. Security Council resolution, the arms embargo against Iran that expires in October. They are a nefarious, dangerous actor in the region, and we'll continue to go after would them with you, all of our diplomatic Would you say money. that fire is a setback by money? Months or more than that? I just can't go there. But thanks for trying. Okay. <laughs> Hope you come back soon then. Thank you, Thank Morgan Ortega. Thank you for your time mm -hmm. at the State Department.